Hello and welcome to a very long video, probably, uh, regarding misconceptions about Russian people. This is presented from my perspective, of course, as a half-Russian girl who has lived in both countries at various periods in my life and now lives in the UK, so your experiences as a Russian person if you're watching this will probably be different from mine, um, but please feel free to leave a comment below and let us know your personal experiences and opinions on this subject. I also fully expect to get some sort of racist or stereotyped comments on this video as I have done on every other video that I've made about Russia, at least the positive ones anyway. I don't think I've made any negative ones. But I'm just going to leave those up there as well, as well as the nice ones which I'm hoping to get <laughs> so that everyone can see what it's like and what kind of comments a Russian person gets. But without further ado, let's get going because I already know from my script and my extensive research that this is going to be a long video. So number one is Russian people deal really well with cold weather. No! I'm a very cold person, physically and emotionally and do not deal well with the winter. Most of my family are the same as well. <laughs> you may notice that my nose will occasionally be quite red because I have chronic rhinitis so I am blowing my nose in between <laughs> cuts. <laughs> so yeah, pay no attention to that. First of all I need to say that not all of Russia is cold and certainly not all year round, even the places that are cold, not cold all year round. Summer can be quite warm um, and in fact in recent years Russia in general has got a lot warmer than it should be. Thank you very much climate change you bastard for taking away the beautiful snow. You see the reason why Russian people can survive pretty well through cold winters when there are cold winters is first of all massive coats made of either fur or uh, modern padding like down down is not modern but you know the modern equivalent of a really warm coat which would usually be padded with down or something else and big woolen boots called vailinki which are made of wool or again the modern equivalent most people don't dress in the traditional way anymore but still wrap up very warm and the clothes are really well designed for a Russian winter. They really work, funnily enough. <laughs> Second of all, it's because everywhere in winter is heated to the extreme. Buses, houses, uh, other buildings, trains, cars. If you come into a building or some form of transportation in winter in Russia, you better take off most of those layers because otherwise you will die from overheating. <laughs> In blocks of flats in the cities, generally the heating is central, uh, as in it's provided to everyone and you pay a monthly or yearly fee for that, but yeah, it, it's provided. And you can't turn it off. So if you have a naturally high body temperature, which I don't, but I know people who do, then good luck sleeping at night. And in rural areas, like really rural areas, you will usually have something like a pitchka, which let me tell you is a godsend. I want one in my house. Third of all, there is actually a good infrastructure set up to deal with the cold and the snow because obviously it's something that Russia deals with every year. So for example, you've got snow clearers working day in, day out to clear the paths and the roads. You've also got good insulation, etc. Unlike in the UK, if a sprinkling of snow touches the train lines, the entire system will not grind to a debilitating halt. However, if you think that this means that Russian people are well equipped to deal with cold weather in other countries which don't have the infrastructure, the heating, the many layers of super warm clothing, then you would be sorely mistaken. You might see online photos of scantily clad Russian women, which is a thing, which is a theme, scantily clad in the snow, or videos of old Russian men jumping into freezing cold lakes and rivers because they're lunatics. But I can assure you that this does not represent the majority of actual Russian people, not to mention that 
photos like the former ones I mentioned are completely staged like people aren't actually like that so if I complain about being cold which I often do do not say the words to me but you're Russian you should be used to it because it doesn't mean that I automatically have extra internal heating of some sort if anything, it just means I'm used to living in a country that actually deals well with the winter and never had to really feel the cold as a result, except maybe on my face. So second misconception is the sexy femme fatale trope. I remember in secondary school there was this guy that me and my friends were talking to for some reason and he found out that I was Russian. It came up in conversation, I think, and immediately his first response was something like, oh, so your, you know, and I was like, what? And he was like, you know, I was like, what? Never mind. I didn't even really get it because I was like 14. <laughs> also to demonstrate my point, if you look up something to do with Russia online, unless it's like politics or something like that, probably a photo along these lines will come up. I actually did this while writing my notes though and proved myself wrong. <laughs> Most of the photos that came up were actually of Putin, but I suppose he's also a stereotype in and of himself. I'm not an overtly sexual person. Maybe at home I am. You'll never know. Overtly, I'm not a very sexual person and I definitely don't dress and style myself like that. So to have this kind of expectation thrust upon you, even from such a young age as well, it's kind of annoying. I personally don't even find this kind of look attractive, in my personal opinion, but even I keep being bombarded with it online. Apparently there are sexy Russian singles near me, and they all kind of look like this. Probably, I don't know, French and East Asian women feel a similar way. But there's this kind of stereotypical woman of our ethnicity which is, sorry, who is greatly desired by men, typically. Not all men, obviously. And this leads to, I would even call it a status symbol of having a Russian girlfriend or wife, or East Asian girlfriend or wife, or a French girlfriend or wife. People would look at you, like, you'd think your friends would look at you and be like, yeah, you got it, guy. Guy? Who talks to their friends like that? <laughs> yeah, you got it, man. Nobody actually talks to their friends like that either, what am I doing? <laughs> and it's really objectifying and makes the girl, I mean, from my perspective, feel kind of shit. Kind of like, you know, if I was French, are you just with me because I'm French and movie stereotypes have told you that I'm good in bed and have an accent that will melt people's hearts? I'm not gonna do a French accent. <laughs> I cannot. With Russian women, movies usually tell you that we're all sexy secret spies. All of us. Definitely. Which brings me to my third point, which is movie tropes. Spies, basically. I actually don't really like watching any kind of spy films anymore because the Russian spy trope is so damn annoying. Especially in American films where the, the bad guys are always either Russian or Chinese, maybe North Korean sometimes, or nowadays Middle Eastern as well. Because that's not racist at all. I cannot tell you how many times in my life, or even just in the past year, someone has brought up Russian spies, plots, or bloody communists. And I understand, of course, where this impression comes from, given past and modern events. But when talking to an actual Russian person, a modern Russian person, who has nothing to do with any of that, maybe keep it to yourself, because I can guarantee that they've heard it all a million times before, and it's kind of annoying. I live in the UK, so it's not so much of a problem, but when I interact with Americans, especially like online in the dreaded Twitter and YouTube comment section, <laughs> then damn, let me tell you, their impressions of Russia and Russian people are so off. <laughs> Most of the time it actually happens when the person doesn't even know that I'm Russian, and just randomly they would bring up something like communism, damn communists. Russian plots, oh we don't want to be living in a country like Russia and things like that and I'm just like... This brings me on to my next misconception which is that all Russian people are communists. Still. 
This sounds like such a stupid point because Russia hasn't been, well, the Soviet Union hasn't been in existence since before I was born, but apparently some people still haven't got the memo. Again, going back to specifically Americans, I'm sorry, I know so many lovely Americans, but it's just a thing. Like, there's so many not good Americans on social media for some reason. You would be surprised how many conversations I've had. I do have a lot of uh, Twitter and YouTube comment arguments to be fair. But you would be surprised how many conversations I've had where the other person's main argument is something like, shut up communist. Great, thank you for your valuable insight into that. Bear in mind that yes, I am moderately socialist because I believe in equality and rights and a good life for all, not just the rich. But people say stuff like that to me before I've even said that I'm socialist, just because we're talking about Russia or they know that I'm Russian or something like that. Let me tell you, there are many Russian people, obviously, who have lived through communist times and because of that, they're very much not communist because they know what it was actually like. To be fair, that is just the people that I've spoken to, like people in my family and friends. This doesn't represent the opinion of all Russian people. I'm sure that there are at least a few Russian people who are communist. However, there are also a few Americans who are communist, a few British people who are communist. By a few, I mean like a small percentage of the population. Not literally, just like three people in a room at the Communist Party. Yeah, that there are more than that, even in the UK. And while we're on the subject, socialism does not equal communism. Please educate yourself before you engage in comment battles with me. And last but not least is a misconception that Russian people drink a lot. However, there is a caveat. Russian people do drink a lot. My point is that Russian people probably drink around the same amount that people in other Western countries do, especially European countries. Russia was not an alcoholized country until around a hundred years ago or so. Chart time. This is alcohol consumption per capita around the world, which to be fair does not look very good for Russia. However, notice that it's not in the highest category, and also if we zoom in to look at Europe's situation in general. Yeah. It looks to me that people in most European countries drink either the same or more, on average, than Russian people. My point is basically that the stereotype of alcoholic Russians and the abundance of vodka is true. <laughs> but it is highly exaggerated. And actually that chart is from 2016. Alcohol consumption per capita has gone down even more now. I think it's 10 litres per person over the year. That's according to the sources that I looked at, um, which I will link down below, or the sources that I used. Let's also bear in mind that both people's views and the data are skewed somewhat by older Russian generations who did and do drink quite heavily, hence the uh, life expectancy is still relatively low compared to other European countries. My personal hypothesis is that the older generation living through communism was not really allowed to be religious. It wasn't a good thing in communism. Whereas now, the younger generations are becoming more religious, which is um, sort of the opposite trend to most countries at the moment and therefore drinking is not seen as such a good thing you know a lot of young people simply aren't interested in that kind of lifestyle anymore as well because society has just moved on somewhat but that's just my hypothesis don't take that 100% seriously let's actually look at some data now I found when researching this that the first thing that comes up is this Wikipedia entry which sounds bad for Russia, but look at how much the alcohol consumption per capita has gone down in recent years. And then if you scroll down, most of the articles listed are about why alcohol consumption has gone down so much in Russia. Some of them say either 30 or 40% depending on which years we start counting from. I'm actually gonna read this quote now because I don't want to get it wrong. 
According to this article, the total rate of consumption per person fell by 43% between 2003 and 2016, with a 40% decline in recorded consumption and a 48% decline in unrecorded consumption. Between 2003 and 2018, all cause mortality dropped by 39% in men and by 36% in women, according to the report. The most substantial drops were observed in alcohol poisoning mortality, with a 73% decline in men and a 78% decline in women. Deaths from alcohol-related liver disease fell by 22% in men and by 24% in women. It also added that mortality from suicides dropped by 62% in men and 61% in women. Why is the life expectancy still so low? How low was it before? Jesus. In this article they say that the main reason for the drop is restrictions on alcohol consumption and the sale of alcohol which have been implemented in the last several years by the government. Which makes sense because alcohol, especially vodka, used to be dirt cheap. Really cheap. So of course if you're sad and you can't afford anything else and there's nothing else to buy because communism, then of course you would get a bottle. A bottle? Of course you would get a bottle to make yourself feel a little bit better in the short term. This article in the Telegraph was not a great read, I have to say, but at the very end it does mention that young people have more stuff to do now, recreationally, um, and also prefer beer to vodka, so that makes sense to me. It's uh, easy to, well it's easier to drink a lot of just alcohol, like pure alcohol, if you're drinking shots of vodka rather than slowly sipping on a beer. Basically I can definitely see where this assumption comes from because it was really recently that Russians did indeed drink horrendous amounts of alcohol and many people were alcoholics but society and the times have changed so I just wanted to point it out at the end of this video uh, just in case anyone hadn't realised. Another assumption I'd like to just tack on the end of there is that Russians can handle a lot of alcohol and uh, let me tell you, they will cry in a corner like any other drunkard at the end of the night. I know some Russian people have a ridiculously low tolerance to alcohol as well. It really just depends on the person, like any other ethnicity or country. So those are all of my often observed misconceptions about Russia and Russian people. And to close, I'd just like to say this is not a babushka, this is a babushka. Do not call me or any item of my clothing a babushka or babushka because it means grandma, it's not the, the head piece. Just saying. I get that a lot as well when I wear my headscarf. Education. Thank you, goodbye. You may notice that uh, my nose will occasionally. <laughs> Great. What did I just say? Another assumption. Another. I can't talk today. That didn't work. <laughs>